What up nerds? First video of 2018, brand new school year. I think it's been like four, five months since I've made a video. Anyway, let's do one. Um, I think some of you year 10 nerds out there are struggling a little bit with some of this circuitry stuff. So if you've missed a couple of lessons or just want to revise, I'm going to do an Ohm's Law Crash Course. I'm going to try and explain everything we've done so far on Ohm's Law in about 10 minutes. Um, if you're seeing this for the first time, please go back and look through the OneNote because uh, there'll be more intricacy than you're going to get right here. And I'm going to go lightning fast because I'm going to try and get it done in 10 minutes to do a recap. So 10 minutes is what I'm aiming for. Let's see if I can do it. Ohm's law, V equals IR. V stands for voltage. We measure voltage in volts. I stands for current. We measure current in amps. R stands for resistance. We measure resistance in ohms. Now we don't normally write out the entire unit, just like we don't write out meters when we calculate perimeter, we just put an M. So you'll normally see volts written as V, amps written as A, and we get a bit funky with ohms and use a bit of Greek. Um, okay, that's all well and good for using the formula, but what do these mean, Mr. Crank? Well, let me show you. Uh, simple circuit, we're gonna have a cell, a bulb, there we go. Short end of the cell is the negative terminal. Long end of the cell is the positive terminal. First thing we're going to talk about is voltage. Now voltage is also called potential difference. And that sort of gives you a bit of a hint as to what it is if you um, are struggling to explain it. In a circuit, we have a charge carrier. In this case, it will be an electron. The electron starts out near the negative end of the cell. And at this point, we know from our electrostatic rules that like charges repel. So right now, this electron has maximum potential energy. It has the most ability to do work. Now as it pushes its way along the circuit, uh, it loses some of that maximum potential to heat and resistance and so forth. And when it goes through this light bulb and makes it glow, it's going to use a bit of that energy to do some work. All the way around here, the electrons have the least ability to do work. So over here, we have minimum potential energy. So if we have a 9 volt battery, we are saying that the difference between the maximum potential and the minimum potential is 9 volts worth of potential difference we have nine volts available to do work in the circuit on things like making light bulbs glow. Current is the number of charge carriers, in this case that would be electrons, that go past a given point in a second. So um, we'd pick a particular point in a circuit, and the number of little electrons that go past here in a second, we'd count those, that's the current. That one's a bit easier to understand than voltage. Uh, one thing that you need to know about voltage and current is when it comes to measuring them, voltage is the difference. So it needs to be measured between two points. So to measure the voltage of this bulb here, we would need to measure between these two points. And that tells us how to plug a voltmeter into a circuit it needs to measure the difference between two points, so it is plugged in to two points and goes around the circuit. Current measures the electrons zipping past in the wire. 
So an ammeter, which measures current, goes inside the circuit. If you understand these are, you know where to put the devices. Next one is resistance. Resistance is the ability of a device in a circuit, a component in a circuit, to impede current. It's not about the electrons being slower. The electrons will still travel at the same speed. It's about reducing the uh, flow of the current. So again, talking about a simple circuit with a resistor, okay, a device with 200 ohms of resistance will be better at impeding, will be better at reducing that current compared to, say, a 10 ohm resistor. Okay, a device that is very good at resisting Okay, the resistance is very high. We would call that a insulator. Something like rubber, current's not going to flow through it. We'll wrap it around a wire so that the wire won't zap us when we touch it. Something that has almost no resistance. The resistance is very low. We call this a conductor. Conductor. The less resistance there is in a wire, the more efficient it will be at transmitting that energy. Okay, so uh, one thing that you'll have to do is you'll have to use Ohm's Law once you know what the bits are. Um, and you'll be given a question, you know, sentence questions. You've got a simple circuit with blah de blah and blah de blah now, you've got to use your comprehension strategies to read through that sentence and pick out the important information. You might have something like in a circuit, the current is equal to 0.2 amps. As you read that, write the pronumeral and the value down so that you can refer to it later. Then you'll find another thing, you know, resistance is equal to 30 ohms. What is the voltage? Okay, we'll use Ohm's law, V equals IR, write out the formula. Substitute, V is the unknown, current is 0 0.2, resistance is 30. 0 0.2 times 30 is 6. This is science, we're doing this maths with a reason, we don't just write 6, it's 6 volts. Now this question was nice and easy because we needed to find V. It's not always going to be that simple. Sometimes you need to do some rearranging. So let's say instead the question was the voltage is 12 volts. The resistance is 10 ohms. What's the current? Okay, that should be an I, I for current. Again, we're gonna use Ohm's law. We're still gonna substitute Now I need to get this guy, the unknown, unknown, on its own. That's the purpose of rearranging an equation, get the unknown on its own so we can solve for it. So I'm going to divide both sides by 10, times 10 divide by 10 cancel, I get 12 over 10 equals i, i equals 1.2, don't forget the units. This is current, so that's amps. So sometimes you'll have to rearrange, like we did here. Sometimes you'll get lucky and you'll just be able to solve for V straight away. One more thing that you might have to do is, let's say you've got a circuit with an ammeter, a bulb, a voltmeter, and you collect some data on this circuit. As we increase the voltage, we measure the current. So you click the little power pack up here, up 2 volts, 4 volts, 6 volts, etc. And as you do, you notice that the current increases. When you graph it, you get a perfectly straight line. When you look at voltage compared to current, and you get a perfectly straight line like this, 
we know that this is an ohmic component or device. We know it's an ohmic component because when you graph voltage versus current for Ohm's law, you always get a linear relationship. Okay, now if we were going to describe this relationship, we would say as independent variable first, voltage, we're going up the axis, so voltage is increasing, increase, increases, sorry, it's hard to spell and talk at the same time sometimes, as voltage increases, current also increases, and we can tell that because as voltage goes up, our current values get higher. Voltage goes up, current value goes up. So as voltage increases, current increases. And how does it increase? Well, it increases linearly. Linearly. Okay, sometimes um, you might have something where that's not the case. The USB um, temperature probes we use in science, the, the vernier ones, right? Those are non-ohmic devices and that's how they work. When you plug them into the computer, their resistance changes uh, and that's how they record the temperature. So if we're looking at one of those, it would give us a non-linear graph like this. No maths required, you can just look at that graph and go, aha, this must be non-ohmic because it's non-linear. There we go. Hopefully I did make that in 10 minutes. Either way, let's recap very quickly. Ohm's law, V equals IR, remember it, internalize it you'll use it for most of this topic. V stands for volts, I stands for current, R stands for resistance, V, we use units of V for volts, I, we use units of A for amps, R, we use units of omega for ohms. Voltage is the potential difference. It's the difference in energy between two points. That's why we put our voltmeter around what we're measuring. Current is how many electrons go past in a second. We put it inside the circuit. Resistance isn't about slowing electrons down. It's about reducing the amount that go past, impeding the flow of current. Something that's got a very good resistance is an insulator. Something that's got a very low resistance is a conductor. Sometimes when you pull the pronumerals out of a question, you get lucky and you can use Ohm's law as is. Sometimes you need to get the unknown on its own and you need to do a little bit of rearranging as you go. Don't forget, whoop, screen jump there. Don't forget the units. If you plot voltage versus current and you get a straight line, no maths, you can just say it's an ohmic component if you plot voltage versus current, and it's not linear, maybe it's this, maybe it's this, maybe it goes up and then down, who knows? As long as it's anything but that straight line, you can say it is a non-ohmic device. Hopefully that helps. That's it. See you nerds.